Kima Alonso spoke at DEF CON 20 about how he owned bad guys and mafia with JavaScript botnets created by a rogue anonymous free proxy server. He explains his story, which I highly recommend you give a watch. It's a wonderful presentation. Alonzo demonstrates the phrase commonly thrown around the internet, if it's free, then you're the product. And in this specific case, Alonzo set up a honeypot as an experiment, and sure enough, these people using the free service were the product. In the digital world specifically, if you're not paying with your wallet, you're likely paying with something else like your retention, your ad clicks, or simple data collection of your behavior. Let's talk about free VPNs today and if they are something you should flat out avoid, or if there's more to the story. If it's free, then you're the product. We've all heard this. If you haven't, it means there has to be some way a company is making money. If it's not from your wallet, they're likely profiting off something else. I have four points to talk about to address the free VPN concerns today, which will add more context to the argument to allow us to make a final takeaway on this issue and hopefully educate you a little bit more. And for those who already have an answer, hopefully come out of this with at least some kind of new perspective. First, yes, how a business makes money is a huge concern and if something is free, you should be asking how it's free. However, there are lots of free things in our world that should be highlighted. Signal, Tor, and most major web browsers like Firefox and Brave are easy examples. Signal and Tor rely on donations, Firefox relies on Daddy's Wallet, and Brave also has search deals and their rewards ecosystem, as well as other things. A lot of open source projects honor users more than their corporate counterparts, Linux being an excellent example. So. Just because something is free doesn't always mean you're the product, disproving this statement at least in certain situations. Let's dial in though on free VPNs themselves. My second point is most strictly free VPNs. I'll talk later why I emphasize strictly free. These VPNs typically have obvious shortcomings, sometimes admitting them pretty obviously, most. If you dig into things like the privacy policies of free VPNs, you'll typically find they do admit to either storing logs or collecting some form of personal information, which paid counterparts don't normally do. You'll also find some free VPNs that just give you an overall crappy experience. In general, and I stress in general, free VPNs have noticeable drawbacks, which are easily picked up by the more tech savvy. If you're not, read the privacy policy and see what they collect, do some quick searches online for previous history of the company, research their business model and how they make money, see if they have a public team and previous projects they've worked on, check their apps in places like App Census, and I'd ask the community for a second opinion. Most likely you will find a drawback somewhere in a strictly free VPN. My third point to flip the argument on its head, just because something is paid, doesn't always make it trustworthy either. To stick with VPNs, IPVanish, HideMyAss, and PureVPN were all paid VPNs that kept logs from their users despite claiming a no logs experience. And just like some free VPNs, paid options are notorious for having false advertising and misleading their customers. And this applies to a lot of things that are not VPN specific. Just because something is paywalled doesn't make it trusted. Fourth, and be very careful with this point as it can be dangerous advice. If you have a very specific use case for a VPN and privacy is not a large concern to you, there is a valid use case for a crappy VPN service that may log your activities. Again, this is dangerous advice and I don't really recommend it to anyone, but if you're trying to bypass network restrictions to just do a quick search at work or school, and you don't wanna dish out money, and this is something you really don't care about and your threat model is that lax, a free VPN might be fine. I'm not condoning pirating, but if you do torrent and you're just trying to avoid getting a warning from your ISP, a free VPN that allows P2P is likely all you need if that's your goal. Those are just two quick examples of cases where users really may not care if they are the product, as long as they're getting some kind of benefit. 
Again, this is very dangerous advice. I don't think many people should do this. And if there's a better option, which there are typically several, I will always push you over to those. With all of that said, what does this all mean for you? There is a pretty easy, safe formula which will work for most people. Avoid strictly free VPNs, just a general rule of thumb. However, there are freemium VPNs that exist, with valid business models and paid options available. ProtonVPN and Winscribe are two highlights who offer limited functionality free plans with a standard paid plan. On that note, Winscribe and Proton are some of the most trustworthy and quality VPN services you can use, at least according to the community as well as our systematic review protocol, which you can view. I'd also check out those individual reviews if you get the chance. They are both great services. Lastly, tying back to our previous point, just because you pay for a VPN doesn't mean it's safe. There are very valid reasons to avoid using certain paid VPNs and their costs have nothing to do with that. If you'd like an opinion from a CEO of a VPN company that has a freemium plan, check out Winscar's blog post on this. It lines up pretty well with what we have to say here in this video. So if I could sum up this video in one sentence, I'd reword the original statement. If it doesn't value you, you're the product. Paid, freemium, or free. That's the video, everyone. Thank you for watching and a major thank you to our patrons who allow this kind of content to happen. If you want to learn about VPNs, we cover VPNs thoroughly here with a very systematic community-driven protocol to ensure things are as transparent as possible. I'll go ahead and link our video with the top five services, two of which have free plans for you to try out today, and one of which I would consider kind of a daily driver, and it's what I use every day as a daily driver, so yeah. Again, thanks for watching and have a lemurish day.